Hello, Isam. Hello, teacher. How are you? Good. Nice to see you here today. Thank you. Nice to see you. Mm -hmm. uh, Joao is here. Hi, Joao. Hello. What's up with you? Well, nothing about time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good to see you here. Thanks for coming. Um, and Jean? Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm great, thank you. How are oh, you? Good, good. I'm good too. I'm great. Glad to hear. Teacher. Yes. Have you watched the that new movie, uh, World War Z? No, no, I haven't. Oh, I want to. Oh yeah, is it good? Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I don't watch many new movies for some reason. I mean, I'd like to, but I haven't seen many new movies. I'll have to watch. What is it about? Zombie apocalypse. Uh, apocalypse. Ah, another apocalypse movie. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of those these days. Yeah. Hey, Christoph. Hello. How are you? Good. Nice to see you here. How are you doing today? Uh, pretty well. Pretty well. Mm -hmm. So um, I think now my family is traveling in... Uh, Czech Krumlov in uh, Czech Republic, in Czeska Republika, <laughs> and uh, so I'm kind of jealous and looking at photos that my sister is posting on Instagram, and I'm like, oh, I wish I was there. But at least I can teach travel classes and pretend I'm traveling the world. Um, uh, Etienne. Etienne? Yeah, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, and you? Good. Uh, I've met you before, right? We've met, right? Mm, I think I think yes. Yeah. Maybe, maybe once. A long time ago, maybe? A couple weeks? Yeah, a yeah, long time ago. Yeah. Now, where are you from? And I'm from Haiti. Oh, that's right, Haiti. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. Welcome. Welcome back. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um... This class is uh, very small. <laughs> uh, usually they fill up faster than this. Okay, Cheche is here. Hey, Cheche. How are you, Cheche? Hey, <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. What's new? How are you? Oh, I'm good. How was your How was your day? Ah, uh, just usual. <laughs> just usual. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. somebody in the lobby said. Uh, did you hair. cut your hair? Uh yeah, a couple of days ago, a few days ago, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Thanks. It was getting too long and shaggy. <laughs> like it was too much. I was like, okay, I don't like cutting my hair too much, but um. I needed to be. I bet you look more handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I have people in the lobby saying that uh, they can't hear my voice. Can you guys hear my voice? Is it too quiet? Yes. yes. Is it okay? Yes. I hear you. Okay. So, so for some reason, some people think it's too quiet. But it uh, should be good. I have a very nice microphone. Uh, should work. Your voice is uh, good, not uh, loud. Not too loud, okay. Thanks. Not too loud. Good. Uh, so maybe they just need to turn up their volume or something. <laughs> um, so, um, small class. Where is everybody today? Usually my classes fill up like that. Maybe I'm not popular anymore. Maybe nobody likes me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe because your hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't like my new haircut. I've actually taught about 20 classes with this haircut and... Normally they're pretty good, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy. Usually, within thirty seconds, it's usually full. But maybe this is a, a bad time of day for people. Maybe. I think because today was three classes every time. 
Oh, is that what's going yes. on? Yes, three classes, three classes, every time was. So, uh, now, uh, currently, you have the two classes. You end uh, mm. with... Uh, yeah, miracles. Miracle, miracle, yeah. Yep. Yes, yes. So, um, so we'll just have a nice intimate class. Um, and that's one thing about our new, the new changes that we're making, the new website that we're going to have will be much more intimate classes, even more intimate than this, where everyone gets more chances to speak because there will only be a couple students. So you'll have a lot more practice and you won't be waiting and waiting and waiting to speak. Um, so let's uh, go around the, uh, the room here and uh, talk to everyone. Well, Jordan has joined us. Hello, Jordan. Yeah. Hi. Hey, how are you? Oh, uh, thank you. Where are you from? Um, Jordan from Jordan. Jordan from Jordan. Your, is your name really Jordan? No, no, it's my nickname. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, do you want me to call you Jordan or what should I call you? Yeah, I think Jordan. Okay, I'll call you Jordan. Thank you. Great. So we uh, are going to take a trip today. We have a travel class, so I'll take you on a journey. And I think we're going to go to Russia. And we're going to take a train across Russia, the biggest country in the world. And uh, that'll be interesting. Um, this will be actually be based on a trip that I did once. Um, the, maybe the most interesting and the greatest trip I've ever taken was a trip from Beijing to St. Petersburg, uh, mostly by train. And so I traveled, it was like a three-week trip with my grandfather, and uh, it was unbelievable. And I even have some pictures I could show you if we have time. Uh, but first we will uh, uh, just learn about some, try to work on our English. So this is an advanced or intermediate advanced class. So if you're a beginner, uh, just try your best. Um, so... Let's, uh, before we uh, start learning about uh, trains, train trips in this travel class, sometimes I like to do this in travel class is to talk to everyone and ask them where they're from. I've done this for some people, so I already know, but, um, but let me just pull up a map and we're going to locate you on the map. Oops. Uh, that is not the map. That is pictures that I took. Um, okay. So, um, this will also be a good test for me because um, I've, I've already located some of you before, and so now I have to remember, uh, remember where you're from. So, We'll start from, uh, we'll start with uh, Christoph. See if I can remember where he's from. Hmm. Bolon, Bolonsh, Bolonsh. Whoops. Uh, whoops. All right. Um, let's see if I can remember. Oh, wait. Are you from this city? Yes. Oh my goodness, I remember. Uh, and now, if I can figure out how to pronounce, is it Glivis, Glivice, Glivice? Glivice, yes. Glivice. Uh, it's, uh, with W, read like V. Yeah, I knew the W, but I didn't. I didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know how to do the last part. Glivice. Glivice, Poland. Polska. Polska. Yes. Polska. <laughs> All right, now that's where Kristoff is from, Eastern Europe. Now we can talk to. Uh, so it's of course from Jordan. What city are you from, Jordan? I'm on. Okay, the biggest city. Yeah. I'm on. All right, and do you travel much? Do you like to travel yourself? Yeah, I traveled before. Oh, really? Um, Unfortunately, the people around me don't like traveling. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
uh, yeah, some internal Jordan, inside Jordan, and some outside of Jordan. Oh, really? Where did you go outside of Jordan? Uh, especially Thailand, Vietnam. Really? Mm -hmm. You went to Southeast Asia. Wow. Yeah. Why did you go yeah. all the way over there? That's that's a long journey. That's really far away. Yeah, uh, I like traveling, and these two countries, you know, it's very nice, different, totally different culture than the Western culture. Yeah, exotic. Yeah. It's a totally different culture, totally different everything. It means exotic. Totally everything. Exotic. And it's a, a big challenge why almost the people there, not almost of them, but in general, they don't speak English. Right. So you have to have intermediate language, like you can speak some of their language, or you have to know some like Chinese or something like that. Do you know any uh, any of their languages at all? No, a little bit Chinese. No, Chinese. Wow, that's good. Mm -hmm. They speak Chinese? Um, Vietnam, yeah. In Thailand, really? some area, but in Thailand, the, it's much better. They can understand your English, even if they can't speak that. Really? They can contact with you anyway. <laughs> interesting. That's interesting. Um, so what about Jordan? If uh, Let's say, what, what about us? If we in this class wanted to visit your country, huh? where, would, where would you recommend that we see or do to travel there? Actually, my country is located in a very old area. I have many, many places to visit, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can have some places like Petra, for yeah, example. Petra is a good... Uh, you know, Jordan Valley. Uh, there's one place for the Jesus who washed there or something. I don't know the exact term. And like you have the north. There's many, many, a lot of Roman and Greek theaters. Greek the oh cool cool mm -hmm. maybe some people there may be some uh, yeah sometimes we have well, there's a lot of things to see I'm sure because it's such an old uh, place with lots of history some of the birth of civilization came from this part of the world and um, there's a lot of interest and maybe also for people who are Christians and there's a lot of these parts of the world yeah there's many telegrams coming here a lot of this one website it helps. Because sorry, I don't know all the places in my country, so oh, this kind of <laughs> ah, beautiful. That's awesome. That's a that's nice. That's really cool. I would love to go there someday. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Great. Very cool. Check out that website and go visit Jordan and Jordan. <laughs> um, but if you visit this website, you almost find the places is located in desert or mountains. But really, Jordan and also Amman have a good city life. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. I like both. I like. The outdoors, I like historic places, and I like cities. I love cities. So I like them all. All right. Very good. Um, so let's talk to – Let's uh, now we've gone from um, southern Poland to northern Jordan. So we went from the eastern Europe to the Middle East. Now we go to where Joao is. Um, See you. Starts with bra in ends with zoo. <laughs> Starts with bra, ends in zoo. Yes. And which city are you in? Sao Paulo. Near to Sao Paulo, a city called Guarulhos. Uh -huh. It's uh, the second biggest city in Sao Paulo. Oh, okay. Is it is it in the metro area of Sao Paulo? Oh, yeah. here it is. Here it is. Gua uh, Guarulhos. The city here? Mm hmm. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. You can take a zoom, a uh, uh, little more zoom. Yeah. Oh, there's the downtown. Yeah, I live in downtown. Oh, cool. Awesome. Hmm. And um, anything, what's special about uh, this city? Oh, I can't pronounce it, Guarulhos. <laughs> well, we have uh, uh, a forest, a little forest here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think you can even see my house. <laughs> really? Yeah. I can see my house from here. Uh, wow, it looks, uh, looks pretty cool. Uh, oh. uh, let me... 
We can even we can even jump into the map. Try to try to take my house there. Oh, you want to show? You're gonna show everyone yeah. the house, really? You it want? is secure. You, okay. Yeah. If you if you give us, uh, all right. I wasn't gonna ask you that, but uh, but why not? <laughs> okay. Oh, you're right downtown. That's awesome. There we are. Oops. There. Wow. No, uh, yes, this right one. Here? Uh-huh. Yeah, now we, we can come visit Joao. <laughs> uh -huh. Come on. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's take a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Wow. <clears throat> We're really getting intimate here. We know exactly where everyone lives. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you where you live, but if you want to, we can do it. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting. Cool. Um, all right. So, Gene. Um, yes. Uh, uh, are you in the same country? Uh, yes, I'm from Brazil. I live in in the northeast coast of Brazil in a city called Natal. Natal, okay. Yeah. Uh, near, is it, oh, there's Natal near. Uh, yeah, it's right over there. It's it's next to the beach. Nice. Is it warm there now, or? Yeah, it's it's pretty warm. Is it usually warm all year round because of the near the equator? Yeah, it, it's um, it's sun. It has sun um, all the year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, do you go to the beach often in Natal? Well, I think not. Not so often. Not quite often. Mm, is it norm? Is it? But it's a common hobby for people. Oh yeah, yeah. A lot of people time. go. Um, people go once in a while. Yeah. Some people go more often, um, but I don't used to go very often. Mm -hmm. Cool. Looks like a great place. How big is Natal? How many people go there? Live there? I mean. Well, I I'm not sure. I I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not small though. It looks like a fairly large city. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful city. Great. Sounds great. Um. Okay. Let's talk to um, Isam. So we've been now we're in. We've already been to three continents. What about you, Isam? I am currently in Athens. Oh, that's right. You're currently in Athens. <laughs> yes. But you're originally from Syria. I am from Syria and uh, from Aleppo. Oh, there's Aleppo right here. Yeah. And then now he's in Athens. But you were also somewhere else, right? You were in Syria. And then you also spent time where? I, yeah, I am here 13 years in Athens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. And what do you think about Athens? I am think about it. It's very great, great place. Mm hmm. And how's the weather there now? Great. Very hot. Very hot. Yeah. I Not agree. very hot. It's great. I like it. Warm. Warm. Maybe. Warm. Yes. Nice. Nice. Excellent. Yes. Do, do you ever go a bit to? Do you ever do any sailing? You ever see the islands? Yeah, I go the three, four islands, right. like. Uh, uh, the the uh, Santorini, Crete. Mm -hmm. Crete. Oh, okay. Yeah. Big island. <laughs> very beautiful. Yeah. Wow. It is very big. The bigger uh, island. You know, I th think your friend uh, Christoph has uh, been to some of these places. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I have been. There. Yep. He's traveling. Where have you been, to Christoph? Uh, on an islands, I was sailing between islands. What is named island? Islands, uh, uh, like uh, I. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. I know island. What is name the island? Uh, uh, for everything, I uh, start with Athens and go by uh, most of this. Uh, ah, a lot of island you ha have yeah, been. Yeah. I oh. was only uh, on sailing. Yeah, great. <laughs> cool. I don't, I don't been, I haven't been in a lot of uh, island. Only two, three, mm -hmm. three. I went to um, 
Carpathos. Carpathos is uh, 24 hour with ship. Hmm. Yeah, if you will call, uh, type Carpathos, it is very sm not very big. It's small, too small uh, island. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, we. Uh, um, Gene has sent us this picture. This picture out. That is. Yeah, you, uh, where I was. That would be. Um, ah, there point. is great. Uh, oh, it is great. Wow. You you ate gyro, Christoph? Did you eat gyro? Mm, yes. Yeah. So so flaky, frappe, Nescafe like frappe. Mm -hmm. That's not all. It is a very beautiful place. Nice. Yeah. Uh huh. Cool. And uh, let's. Uh, so now let's travel. Let's keep traveling. I'm gonna go to a very very different place. Uh, I'm gonna go to the Caribbean. To the island, uh, there, this is the island of Hispaniola, which was discovered by Columbus, uh, well, and uh, settled by the Spanish. And this half of the island is Haiti. So, um, Etienne. Hello. Are you uh, are you in uh, Port-au-Prince? No, Croatia. Where is it? Uh, yeah, right there. Um, hey, patient? Yeah, right there. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. I don't mm. know about the city. Tell me about this city. Is it nice? Do you like it? Etienne? Yeah, I'm listening to you. Yeah, do you like uh, this city? Yeah, I really like it. Yeah. You know, we have some, some, we have some great uh, beaches there, and mm -hmm. you can look for Labadi, and then you will see it. Labadi. Um, I really like this city. So. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Have you lived here your whole life? Were you born here? No. No, I've lived for the, uh, in Cabochon for um, 19 years. So right now I'm living in Dominican Republic. So I'm studying. I'm studying here. I'm studying medicine. Oh, so, so you're currently. Here. Here. Yeah. And which yeah. city? Huh? Which city in the Dominican Republic? Santiago. Santiago. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I have another student who's from here. Or yeah. Really? Yeah, I think so. I meet a lot of people here in Colingo. <laughs> oh, <all> that's great. <laughs> that's great. So ah, I'm see. learning kind of Spanish there also. Okay, you know. so you're learning Spanish, English. How's your Spanish? What's better, English or Spanish? What's easier for you? <laughs> I can say I, I can say Spanish because you know that I'm living in, in a country where Spanish is spoken, you know? Yeah. So I can say Spanish because I know... Um, most of thing in Spanish than than English. Mm -hmm. so and I think right now I don't have any problem to speak with any in Spanish. Uh, right now I can say that I don't have any problem. You know, maybe you can say something in English and I can ask you what I mean, but maybe in Spanish not. Uh -huh. And is yeah. your native language uh, Haitian Creole? Yeah, it's Creole and also French, but. Um, not, we are not, not all Asians speak French, I can say that. Oh, okay, I was, yeah, I, that was yeah, my maybe, question. Was yeah, maybe, maybe they, you can find a person that speaks um, Creole, also understands French, but he doesn't speak, maybe he doesn't speak mm -hmm. French, you know, hmm. because French is for educated person. Right. Yeah. Which you you mean uh, 
a kind of education to speak education to speak um um French. Uh -huh. You need to go to school. Yeah. yeah. So you go to Navy you just, teach. Sorry. Yeah, I was just saying that we have someone in the lobby who's actually in the Dominican Republic right now. So we have a lot of people uh, from all mm -hmm. around the world, and there's even somebody named. Sandro Rojas it says. Oh, Sandro. Okay. Sandro, there he is. He's in the. He's in uh, Santo Domingo. Santo Domingo. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um. Cool. Very cool. Interesting. So now, where should we go now? Diego has joined us. Hello, Diego. Yeah. Hello. Good afternoon. Hey. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Argentina. Ah, Argentina. Okay, well, I don't meet many people. From, for some reason, I don't meet that many people from Argentina. Argentina, that's what I. <laughs> yeah. So uh, now I I I am living in Nashville, Tennessee. Ah, <laughs> ah okay. Yeah, you're my neighbor. That's right. Oh yeah. Uh, so where are you from in Argentina? Buenos Aires. Ah, Buenos Aires. That's supposed to be a really great city. Really awesome. One of the biggest cities in South America, right? To, I would love to visit um, some. Um, but now he's in the USA. So did you celebrate uh, Independence Day yesterday? Yes, of course. We we went to the downtown to see the, the fireworks. Downtown Nashville is cool. Yeah. A lot of music. <laughs> yes. It's a music yeah. city. A lot of music, country music and all kinds of music, singer songwriters. Broadway is the main street in Nashville and it's really cool. Really cool place. There's a football stadium there. Yes, in front of the the river. Yeah, mhm. Mm very nice, very nice city. I like it and it's very close. I could drive there in 4 hours. Yes. Yep, that's right. That's right. I remember now. Okay, cool. And finally, uh, we will talk to Cheche. I've we've talked before, so <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Let's test my memory. It's a quiz for me. I should, I should know by now where she's from. Ah, is that Christoph? Did you get it? In Sumatra, Padang, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Christoph says yes. Yes. Um. Good. So, um, oh, and also, uh, we have another country that's joined us. Tajatin? Uh, yes, hello. How are you today? I'm fine, and you? Okay. Good. What city are you from? Uh, Hatay. Southern part of Turkey. Southern. What's the what's the name? Hatay. H A T A Y. Uh, I don't the, see look at the uh, east of Cyprus. Ah, if you look at the uh, Cyprus east, sorry, east. East of Cyprus. You, yes, uh, follow uh, Lebanon. Lebanon. Uh, uh, follow uh, north of the Lebanon. Yes, that's right. Oh, right. oh, way over here. Yes, I'm here. Oh my goodness! Interesting. That's an interesting part of the world. I didn't really. I don't often think about Turkey being this close to. Yeah, it's closer to Lebanon or Syria. Way down there in this, this kind of like tip. Interesting. Is um, huh? That's interesting. And um. Uh, it's an ancient city, Atay, also. It's an ancient city. Ancient, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, old city, yes. Uh, there is first cave uh, church here. Yeah. First cave church. A cave church? Yes. Really? So, wow. St. Pierre. Okay. St. Pierre Church. It's Pilgrimage for Christians. Mm -hmm. Okay, very interesting. That would be yeah. Turkey is another very interesting country with a lot of history, a lot of ancient history, um, and I would love to travel there someday. 
Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay, so um, today I want to talk about um, train travel. Um, has so? Oh, first let me just say I'm. My name is Anthony, and I'm from. I live in Atlanta, right here. It's a city in the biggest city in the South. This is called the South of the United States, even though it's in the Southeast. It's this is called the South. This is Texas. And this is the Southwest, but this is called the South. And then we have Florida. So anyway, Atlanta is the biggest city in the South. Uh, teacher. Yeah. Uh, were you born in Atlanta? No, I was not. Oh, okay. So was, where was you born? I was born in this state up here, Wisconsin. Okay. Near Chicago. Near Chicago. I was born in this area. Okay. Much colder. So. Um, has anyone, has everyone here traveled by train before? Has anyone here that has never traveled by train? I've never traveled by train. I've traveled. Yes, yes, I have. No. Every here is only traveling by train. Right. Yeah, it depends. It depends yes. Who said they'd never traveled by train? Etienne? Me. Oh, oh, draw. Okay. Never traveled by train. Um, I don't... I never really did much in my life because um, because in the United States is so big and we don't really have a very good train service. We have some a lot of trains up here in the Northeast where there's all these big, big cities like New York and, and Philadelphia and uh, Washington, D.C. and all these cities, Boston. A lot of trains here because they're so close together. So trains are very useful here in this megalopolis. There's a good vocabulary word for you today. Have you ever seen that word before? Megalopolis? <laughs> Sao Paulo is a megalopolis, I think. Yeah, Sao Paulo is... Well, Sao Paulo... Yeah, maybe it is. It might be. It's definitely a metropolis. And a megalopolis is a many... Uh, when you have more than one metropolis... Metropolis. Many met, met, metropolis. Yeah. Many metropolis equals, and if they're close together, then you have a megalopolis. Because mm -hmm. if you look closer, let's zoom in here. We have, um, look at this. We have Boston, and then all these cities here Providence, New Haven, Stamford, New York. Um, uh, we have, you know, Jersey, uh, Philly, Baltimore, Washington, D.C. All these cities are almost connected by many, many, many people. All these people, all these trains, all these buildings. There's really hardly any countryside between all these giant metropolitan areas. So this is a megalopolis. Um, anyway, um, back to trains, which is kind of one of my topics today. Um, it's a big country, right? And um, we have some trains. You can find a train that goes to Atlanta. Um, but for instance, if I wanted to go to I used to live in Omaha for a while which is right here in the middle and if I wanted to take a train to Omaha I would have to either go <laughs> I think I'd have to go to Washington DC <laughs> and then to Chicago and then to Omaha right to go from Atlanta or maybe I could go from Atlanta to New Orleans <laughs> Uh, maybe to Dallas and then up to Omaha, right? There's no um, easy way because it's just too big and there's not many cities, not many big cities to go to. Um, so we don't have many trains here. And so I have never you visited a... Dallas? I was just in Dallas two weeks ago. Yeah, you're in Texas, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I was in Dallas, Austin, Houston, all this this whole triangle here. Um, so, um, I was never on a train in my life until I was, a, you know, in my 30s, until I was old. <laughs> Dallas and is safe city now? Safe? Yes. Uh, maybe. It's relatively safe. I mean, I don't know. It depends on where you are. I don't know how safe it is. Uh, it's okay. Um, but, um, it's, you know, it's a big city. Business. Um, we have, so 
my first experience with trains was a trip from Beijing, China um, to St. Petersburg, Russia. And that's like basically going around the world in a train. <laughs> yeah, too long. It's just, a, it's almost like going around the world in a train. Um, I think I might have some, I could find the exact trip actually. But um, let's see, I'll actually just show you in a way, just to kind of give you an idea of how far away this is. of how far that is. Um, so these, this is, you know, this is the world. <laughs> and I'm almost crossing the whole world on a train. Um, of course, by Kazakhstan or Mongolia? Uh, by, by Mongolia. By Mongolia. Yeah, it makes more sense. Um, and the Trans-Siberian Railway, which is what we'll talk about today, is... Uh, Was built by Saab. Is that an expensive, expensive travel? Um, technically, technically, um, <laughs> look, it's, it says they cannot even, Google can't even tell me how to possibly do this. It's not even possible. <laughs> it says we cannot calculate directions because maybe if I use public transportation, no. No, it's too hard. They can't even, it's too hard for Google. Maybe to you have to get some seat in Mongolia. Mm, what's that? Maybe you have to add some city from Mongolia. Yeah, probably. So, um, um, I was, uh, I'm trying to find something on this exact trip I took. But what I did was, it was with a, a, a group and uh, we went, we, we flew to Beijing, spent a few days in Beijing, which is an amazing city. We went up, to, looked at the Great Wall of China, um, and, um, and then uh, after a few days, we uh, took the Trans-Mongolian Railway, which connects, basically connects Russia and China. So that we'd start on a Chinese train and went this way and crossed the border <clears throat> into Mongolia. And um, then uh, ended up in the only real city in Mongolia. <laughs> this is basically the only city in Mongolia. Uh, yes, capital, yeah, Ulaanbaatar. Exactly, Ulaanbaatar. And it's... There's some tiny, tiny little villages, but it's the only real city in uh, Mongolia. It's not even that big. Uh, sorry, teacher. Mongolia is in Asia or Europe? Asia. Asia. Asia, okay. Yeah. So, Europe, uh, Asia and Europe are divided by a mountain range. Yes. Which is right here, the Ural Mountains. So, if you're on this side of the Ural Mountains, then you're technically in Europe. And if you're on this side of the Ural Mountains, then you're Asia. And we learned about Kazakhstan last week, I think. Yes. We learned that this little tiny part of Kazakhstan is in Europe <laughs> because <Yes. laughs> of the mountains. So that I, thought, I found that to be very interesting. But most of Kazakhstan is in Asia. So uh, Mongolia is a predominantly uh, uh, predominantly uh, uh, nomad Nomad. Uh, they have nomad. I think used to they were an empire. Yeah, yeah, it used to be. Yeah, it was a very different place. It was a. They were very. They uh, took over the world. <laughs> in, yes. in the 1300s, they took over the world. Uh, right, Genghis Khan. Genghis is the way they pronounce it in Mongolia, but in uh, American English, we say Genghis Khan. Genghis. Yep, Genghis is how we say it here. But he, uh, yeah, he conquered pretty much the entire world. <laughs> One of the biggest <laughs> empires ever in the history of mankind. Um, and they, were, they fought and they were very destructive people. And now 
Mongolia is a Buddhist state, and they're very peaceful. <laughs> so they've changed their tune a little bit. Um, and uh, so we spent some time there. We stayed in a gare. Okay. Uh, we went. We stayed in the city, and then we went to the countryside, and we stayed in a gare. And a gare is um, is a Mongolian tent. And I may have some pictures of this. Let's look here. Um, Siberia, Mongolia. Um, so here's some photos I took in Mongolia. Um, oh, I think I have construction of a gear somewhere, but it might not be here. Because that I really wanted to show you that, but I don't know if I have it on this. Maybe not. Anyway, um, these are some photos from Mongolia. And I do have the inside of a gear, which is here. If you go inside one of these, it's a big round tent, and inside you see uh, it's very warm. Mongolia is very cold and dry, as somebody pointed out earlier. Um, you, the stove, you have a stove in the middle, um, and it's very beautifully decorated. There's lots of colors and painted wood, and you see these beds here are around the walls, and the beds have many blankets, and they're very warm, and it's a very warm stove, and they even... Uh, this is some tea that they had for us, which is really nice. So, okay, sorry, Anthony. Your question about uh, gear. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of materials is used for gear? Liver, uh, yes. Liver? What, liver, what yes. What kind of material? Um, actually, it's um, like, so gears are, so because they're nomadic, they use them to be able, to, they, they make them because they're able to to construct them very fast and to break them down very fast because they keep moving. So um, it starts with, um, I wish I had that picture, wool. but it's, it starts with uh, like a frame of wood, um, yeah. like pieces of wood, and then there's, um, there's some kind of insulation that they use. Um, um, they used to use... Um, like like animal hide like s animal skin you know like leather kind of like for, for like an old in the old days but now they use more of a, like a plastic something that's not not organic and um, yeah so it's wood and cloth there's blankets inside it's very warm and uh, but they're able to build one of these in less than a day I saw I saw them do it um, and they're, they're interesting so let me just quickly continue this. Um, hold on. All right. So um, then we cross the border into. Oh wait, I gotta get. I want to get you back into this map. We cross the border into Russia, and crossing the border into Russia is an interesting experience because not only do you have to change countries and show them your visa and show them everything but they actually have to change the train itself they change the wheels um, and they because the tracks are different the train tracks are different that's why though yeah oh you know <laughs> yes uh -huh. because we have the same problem <laughs> oh yeah okay so to so if you take a train from Poland to what about in um, Kaliningrad uh, Kaliningrad uh, and uh, Be Belarus and uh, all the Soviet countries. Yes, over Soviet country. And I think maybe uh, one reason is to make it so it's harder to enter the country. Maybe um, so they change the track, so they have to change the wheels on every train, and so it takes. We have some uh, one line to to uh, face wider uh, train. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it takes so long. It takes hours. We're on the border for hours and hours waiting for them to do this all night long. Uh, and then we went to Ulan Udye, which is a city in uh, Buratia, which is a region of um, uh, Siberia. And this is the world's biggest freshwater lake. 
Anyone ever, does anyone know the name of this lake? It's huge. It's the biggest freshwater lake in the world. I didn't know the name of it either, by the way, <laughs> until I until I learned. About it. No, no, I don't know. It's Lake Baikal. Lake Baikal. Baikal. Yeah. I'll spell it for you. Baikal, and it's very deep. Um, it's like over. It's over a mile deep, which is uh, which is like more than a kilometer, more than a kilometer deep. Okay, and then we started our gr giant train journey. Uh, we took the Trans-Siberian uh, Railway all the way across Siberia. Novosibirsk is one of the is the third biggest city in Russia. <clears throat> all the other cities like Omsk and Tomsk and uh, you know all those cities, Chelyabinsk, maybe Yekaterinburg, Kazan, Nizhny Novgorod. Um, oh, we did stop in Kungur. Which, uh, which is right here, Kungur. It's a beautiful little city. And then, of course, Moscow and St. Petersburg. But, so that's a crazy trip around the Venice world. Venice of North. Ah, the Venice of the North. St. Petersburg is a very beautiful European-style city. It's a newer city. Very nice. Okay, so let's, um, let's read. Let's just do some. Let's go back to the United States and do some reading here about train travel. But I just want to do a little, uh, do a little bit of uh, map work. So let's talk to um, Cheche. Okay. Do some Ooh. reading, and speaking practice. When you visit a different city or country, how do you choose to get around? Do you walk, drive a car, take the bus, or ride the train? Walking is the easiest thing to do in a city, but if you have a lot of ground to cover, it's not a practical choice. Cars are expensive and sometimes parking is a problem. Buses are good for riding around within the city, but trains are usually better because they are faster and they can travel longer distance at a lower cost. Mm -hmm. Right. So, some basics about trains. Uh, good. Um, Diego? Diego, are you there? Um, Etienne? Yeah. Uh, about, what about the next line, the next paragraph? The next paragraph, okay. In the United States, many cities have trains that provide transport transportation inside and outside a city. City like Chicago, New York, and Washington, D.C. have subway systems located beneath the city. If you have to travel to one city, Find a subway map, and you will be able to travel just about anywhere on the mm. ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have little trains. Like Atlanta has a small metro, like a, a train system like that. Mm -hmm. And they're very uh, handy. They're very uh, useful because it's I don't have to drive. It's cheaper. don't have to spend money on gas. It's more environmental. It's better for the earth, right? So good way to do, good way to travel if you have such a, if you have the possibility. Good. So there's a lot of sub subway over there? Excuse me? There, there are a lot of subway over there in, um, in the United States? Only in large, large metropolitan areas and big metro cities. Like they talk about big cities like, uh, say they say Chicago, New York, Washington, D.C., the big cities have some. Yeah. Um, mm. Right. So, uh, let's talk to Isam. Yes. Next. Okay. I can't see. It is too small. Okay. I'll try to make it a little bigger. Uh, one moment. It's my computer. My computer is mad at me because I have too many windows open. <laughs> Uh, so just yes, it is um, 
it is better, I think. Make it bigger. How about that? Yeah, it is good. Yeah. Thank you. Many kids also have trains that travel about the around. It is a great way to see everything. Tra trains traveling uh, through downtown airs and through the, through the con con commun commensal and res residential this this rents doris doris such as museums museums yeah, and yeah. and shopping districts districts uh, are is easily reached by train in chicago you can take the l and elevate, elevated system of com commuter trains that con connect the that is neighborhoods to the downtown air san francisco is famous for it is trolley 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 system other kids like denver denver Por portland Minneapolis and is it Paula are developing light rail systems to help meet the need needs of of a going population okay. Pop population yeah population, population. Uh, this this word here is is the plural of city so it's cities cities Ah, uh, cities. Yeah, so okay. One, one city or many cities. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I'll just read that back so you can hear my pronunciation. Uh, many cities also have trains that travel above the ground. It's a great way to see everything. Trains travel through uh, through downtown areas and through the commercial and residential districts. Tourist attractions such as museums and shopping districts are easily reached by train. And now this is really cool. I've been. Uh, Chicago is a cool city. Very nice. You can take the L. The reason it's called L, because it's L in because kind it's, of train. Yeah, because it's an elevated train, so they call it the L short for elevated, not because it's oh, yeah. the L, because it's elevated. <laughs> so it's a very old system. It's been around for a long time, but it's mm. all up, it's all elevated. Uh, commuter trains that connect the neighborhoods to the downtown area. San Francisco is very famous for its trolley system. And other cities are developing light rail. It's uh, faster and uh, and more uh, environmentally friendly. Good. Um, Gene. Yes. Uh, what about the next paragraph? Okay. Uh, for long distance travel, you can take Amtrak, which is a national railroad system used by passengers who are on business or traveling on vacation. If you want to travel a long distance, a plane is much faster, but but Amtrak is cheaper, and for some people it's much more relaxing than a plane. On the east coast of the United States, Amtrak is a very popular way to travel. Right, and you remember what I said? You remember why? Because uh, uh, the east, I was telling you about that megalopolis, right? So it's very popular here with all these cities, so they take a lot of trains. So now, this I'm Amtrak now. is from New York to Washington, right? Well, it, yeah, you can. Uh, Amtrak is the national uh, company, though. It's like okay. Amtrak is all the the, the the national train is Amtrak. It's all over. It stands for Am for America. But it's just like I'm from the Midwest here, and nobody takes trains here. I mean, it's not very popular. I mean, there's no, there hardly are any trains. So you take cars. You, everyone has a car in the United States. Uh, unfortunately. Um, good. Uh, Joao? 
Okay. Um, if you decide that you want to live in the United States, it's a good idea to consider finding an apartment or a house that's close to a train station or a bus stop. Owning a car is really expensive, plus you need to have a driver's li license license and, uh, and car insurance in order to drive. Most immigrants wait a year or two before buying a car. In the meantime, mass transi transit options, buses or trains, are a great way to save money. Yeah, excellent. So uh, how much is for a car? How much, how much does a car cost? Uh, yes, for a cheap car. <laughs> for a cheap car? Uh, second hand. Oh, second-hand cheap car. I mean, you can find a second-hand cheap car for, you know, two or three thousand oh. dollars. Wow, that's cheap. <laughs> that's cheap in the United States. Well, you can find one for even cheaper. If you, I mean, it depends on how bad it is. If it's really not a very good car, you can find one for a thousand dollars, or maybe even less. But it's going to be, it's probably not going to be very good, and it probably might not be worth it. You might want to spend a little bit more for one that lasts longer, or that you don't need to repair every day. <laughs> but you can get a decent old car for $2,000, a very nice one actually, that runs fine. A new car uh, costs more than $10,000 in the United States. More than Here you can get a, a second-hand good uh, medium car for uh, $15,000. $15, 15, $15,000 or 1500 $15,000. 30,000 reais. This much? Yeah. And a new car, a medium new car, you can, you have to pay uh, 40,000 reais. Yeah, it sounds like your cars are more expensive than the United States. Yeah. More expensive, yeah. In Poland, uh, we have more expensive car too. Mm -hmm, really. Start from twenty thousand dollars. Starts okay, yeah. We can get a. Uh, you uh, you had a long car in America. Uh, uh, twenty uh, years ago, there was in Turkey. Have you been using those cars? Um, what Charlotte? Like what kind like, of? It's, it was a long and big cars. Oh. Yeah, they're popular. We like big cars in the United States for some reason. Um, it's not like European cars. Uh, although st we're starting to change that. Our, a lot of our newer cars are starting to be interested in small cars, finally. Um, but I don't. I never drove any big, big cars like that. Um, so, Jordan? Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Joao. I haven't talked to Joao yet, have I? <clears throat> Joao, are you there? Yeah, I've just read this. Oh, you did read. Okay, I just want. I did, I, did I skip some? Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't skip anyone. Um, Jordan, it is Jordan's turn. Oh uh, yeah. So before you came to United States, find out which city have co public transportation system. It's easier and less expensive than take mass transport tr transit transit instead of driving, and you'll meet more people that way. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, um, so unfortunately we are, we've run out of time and, uh, but we, we, we get to do some practice there, learn about trains, learn a little bit about Russia. If you're still interested in learning more about the world, I have a geography class right now and we're going to continue talking about, uh, about Russia itself as a country. Um, culturally, geographically, learn some facts about Russia. And um, it's a beginner class, but it will be interesting because you learn about Russia if you like that. So um, thanks, everyone, for joining me. I didn't even have time to, to do all my lesson today, but that's okay. We, it was pretty fun. So thanks again, and good job, and I hope to see you soon. Bye, teacher. See you. Bye. Yeah, bye. Yeah, bye. Take care. Good job. Thank you.